And here we go. This is Flash at In a Perfect World. On the last Tuesday of the first month of 2020. And uh, today is the 28th, by the way. And I'm doing a solo tonight. I had planned on having Graham Z join me, but something must have come up. And either she's temporarily delayed or she couldn't make it to the show. So, if I do it alone, I will do an hour. If I get Mary to show up, we'll get a full show. And uh, outside of that, thanks to Grim for the usuals. And uh, you had me and Cirque giggling this morning when we were listening to uh, hmm, Grim Leftovers. And we'd like to say, hey, do the bots and the bodies of the reallibertymedia.com chat. And tonight, for your reading approval, we've got, we got Barman and Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti-Asmo, Chalcedony, Circle, hey honey, she's upstairs now, uh, Echelon, Graham Z, who's not here, but logged on, so there's hope. And we've got, uh, I'm going to skip the next one, it's a mistake. We've got Java Doctor 2, Meisterbrow, Prince, Rob Works, Romes, Vanna White, Weather Dork, The Phantom, CC66 Chas, Kira, Cyborg Noodle, Ensiv, Me, Frumpy, Frumpy Work, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Ponsas, Sock Puppet, Slim, Jim, Flim, Smart Hands, the Holiest Roger, and z And there's your, uh, your chatters this evening if you want to jump into the RLM and get into an argument about what color Trump's hair really is. And tonight's show has been entitled, for your reading approval in the notes, I got me a title here, let me see what I wrote. It is called, The Cure for Politics has been here all along. And the reason I came up with that for a topic is I was playing around looking through uh, Wikipedia before earlier in the day uh, through uh, Truth Serum. And I figured, well, I got a Wikipedia thing come up. But it got me to thinking, if this claim is true, why are people in Washington telling us lies? (laughs) And, uh, I thought maybe I will, here, I'll post a copy of this shit for you. And maybe I'll do a little, I'll I'll read a little bit of it to get your juices flowing. On In a Perfect World tonight, today, night day, night day. But out here in D-Mark, it's nine and, nine o'clock. So it's it's late night for me because I'm an old guy. Anyway, so the, the thing that the Wikipedia had to say about it is very simple. And I kind of went, hmm. And this is why. Truth serum is a colloquial name for any of a range of psychoactive drugs used in an effort to obtain information from subjects who are unable or unwilling to provide it otherwise. These include ethanol, uh, I don't know, sopolamine, uh, 3-canoclidinol benzolite, late, mido, mido, wait, midazolam, uh, pam, <laughs> zodium, sodium thiopental, and um, mobarbital, among others, it says. Now, that, just just that, that's what I wanted to read. And, and the reason I wanted to bring this up is, it strikes me that if this is the truth, probably it's not. Why can't they just, instead of all this court shit, why don't they just give people this serum and have them tell the truth? I mean, they're willing to stick mercury in a newborn baby. Why not stick a little truth serum in a you know, 70-year-old man that's telling a story. And what harm could come from it? I mean, what? 
guy's insured, his family's taken care of forever, so what? So he died on <laughs> an overdose of truth syrup and told the truth and died. What a problem to have, huh? Anyway, so that was what's on, <laughs> on my mind today on the, In a Perfect World. I think that would probably be the uh, the solution to all our problems in, in a strange kind of way. And anyway, uh, without a partner, the show's a lot harder to do. It's harder for me to stay focused on one concept at one given time. But the ideas that come to mind, like uh, my, my buddy was over yesterday. We used the uh, RLM to communicate with each other because he lost his phone. So we just use the internet. and I'm, I've got the site open because I keep it open. Sometimes I talk in the morning, sometimes I read a little bit. Depends. But anyway, so he, he come on looking for me. And uh, we listen to bizarre music. We try to show, he's tried to show me music I'm not familiar with. I try to show him stuff he's not familiar with. And one thing I, I didn't think of yesterday was Frank Zappa was on the Steve Allen show playing the bicycle <laughs> in 1963. Seriously, he... Here, I'll post the link of it if you want to see the link. But it, it was just such a... a, a biz- Whoops, I'm playing the link. I don't want to do that. So it's such a bizarre thing to see a grown man. Hold on, I started again. I'm trying to... Eh, okay. But he, uh, anyway, to see the guy do what he did and take control of the orchestra and get people to uh, follow his lead... But the part that's really strange is he's wearing a suit and he's got short hair. So he, uh, at that time, he was 1963. That's what you could do. And restriction was so tight. You know, people were, uh, if they didn't have high expectations, they had dress codes. Or maybe not dress codes were, people were uh, openly forced, but expectations were made. And back in those days, we didn't have internet and shit like this to instantly do anything. So you either followed the rules or you broke them. And if you broke them, there was usually consequences for it. So what Zappa did (laughs) was uh, very strange. If you see the video, it would take the video to explain it. And then how I go on about interpretation. It's not about the quality of what he did. It's about the uh, the results. Because I'm always looking, saying, look at the results of something. And if you look at the end, you can usually, if you have a decent kind of thinking process, you can figure out how it was they started to get where they are. And that kind of thinking, of course, fucks me up because I use it in every area. And some things to me in life are, are too big for the official <laughs> the official story. <laughs> and the official story is usually, well, we all know where that goes. But anyway, so to go nowhere with this, I just uh, had a brief moment where I remembered Frank and his influence in uh, in our society and how it was pretty much controlled and pushed aside by the mainstream and the government. They didn't want nothing to do with Zappa. And he had enough of a following on his own without any real push through the media to keep himself, you know, financially successful enough to do what he did. He was never short for a play. He always found a place to work. And he worked with a lot of people. In fact, when, uh, when he did the film more with Lennon after the Beatles broke up, his version of the recordings they did together was Lennon took him and pressed him on his own and said, Hey, look what I did <laughs> without really, you know, uh, consulting him on a financial. They just said, yeah, yeah go well, well, let's record it and see what happens. But Lennon was a little greedier. I think it was his wife, but that's my opinion. Mm. Anyhow, So, all that leading up to absolutely nothing on In a Perfect World tonight. Because the solo thing. Can't stay 
focused on one particular idea for too long. I must be like a, what do you call those people? You know, I'm schizophrenic and so am I. <laughs> anyway, ah, I miss Mary when shit like this happens. So let me see if I can't find something interesting that's going on in the world to inform my fellow carbon-based platforms about. Because I know that the latest scare, government scare, is this uh, coronavirus that we got. It's a, it's a laboratory. <laughs> it was created at to the point it's at now, whatever that is. It was done inside a laboratory. So, just like all the rest of them before it that, you know, escaped the laboratory or somebody decided to brew, unleash it on the public. And here we are. But the weird part about this one in particular is they applied. <laughs> and I think the reading I sent, I got sent to it told me that Bill Gates owns the corporation or the company that owns the vaccine to the, <laughs> the coronavirus. <laughs> so, this thing is just, it's too perfect, just like everything else. All the negative crap. I mean, if they're going to kill us with a virus, it was nice knowing you guys. I had a lot of fun. It's been swell. <clears throat> now, on the other side of that coin, if this is another one of their scare tactics or a way to get people inoculated so they'll line up for those $400 shots. Now, that's a good way to you know, stimulate a little economy, I suppose. Panic everybody. In with the Like I was saying the other day about all these damn movies. <coughs> you know, there's a, there's a virus to kill everybody. And they're all different. You know, because this virus does <laughs> I don't know. It's just so ridiculous. And then again, on the other hand, it's like the boy that cried wolf. You know, when the wolf really comes. <laughs> ah, the Corona Boogaloo. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. And they're already claiming they have a, somebody they're checking in Denmark for it. And then some crazy guy put up a meme that uh, the first case was cured in China, <laughs> but there was no link to it, so it was just somebody having fun on the Internet. So how much of this crap that we get is somebody having fun on the Internet? And why put it beyond the government to have a little fun with its you know, slaves? They can do anything they freaking please, and what can we do about it? Complain. And then earlier today, I come up with this brilliant, brilliant answer to solve all the police problems in the entire country of the United States. Because I live there, and I'm pretty familiar with it. And what I thought of was, and I got the idea from the protesters. You know, if all the pot smokers in America, if there are indeed as many pot smokers in America as they claim there are, join together as one person at one time of a day, and just said, hey, let's go out and burn one in the street. Now, according to the numbers, the streets would be clogged. You wouldn't be able to drive through it. So, that led me to think, how many cops are there in the United States? Because there's over 300 million people there. Okay, How many police? So, I opened up a site thing. It shows me there's less than 800,000 uh, licensed, organized, on-the-payroll police in the United States of America, which tells you that there's, you know, there's wannabes and there's higher outs and all that kind of shit. But the actual force is less than a million. So, figure what, 30% of the uh, adult population smokes weed? And what would you consider adult now? 28? <laughs> now, in California, an adult is an ugly third grader. But in, you know, Texas... I think you got to be 15, but in Ohio, you can be 18, but in Illinois, <laughs> United States, <laughs> you, guys, you guys crack me up, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. I still think that uh, if people were connected and we're not, you know, everybody's got a thousand friends on Facebook, but they don't know five of them. But I mean, if we're really connected to the, the amounts of people that we think we're connected to, 
and we all thought the same way that we all claim we think, then we should all be able to get together and as one unit go against the damn system that's oppressing us. But no, a lot of people are going to settle for legalization. Me, I'd say, hey, fuck legalization. Let's just call a stop to this global prohibition bullshit in the first place. Because if you really want to clean the world up, the first thing you got to do is get hemp off fucking law books. And stop this shit. It's stupid. And they'll go, well, it's, it's legal in some places. And then that's the whole fucking point. They've still kept up the, the imaginary demon. And it's such bullshit. Go back, through, look through Ford's in, in documents on the internet about hemp mobiles. He was making, uh, his first design was run on hemp. He made cars completely from bumper to bumper on hemp. And they called it hemp vinyl panels, I think, at the time. But you can make um, you can make clear hemp products. It, you can make anything out of this stuff. It's just it's too good to be believable. But yet here we are. We sit on computers and talk to people in foreign countries like it's normal. I'm sitting here in Denmark, and uh, Grimner's over there in New Mexico, you know, and this is normal to us now. Now, the time of life I came out of, you didn't know, this was TV and movies, and they didn't do it like this. They talked into their shirt, like that logo <laughs> of the Space Force, the Star Trek logo that Trump borrowed. <laughs> You know, I remember uh, Captain Kirk patting his chest and talking to the Enterprise. And now Trump wants to do it. And he's got <laughs> he's got a space force. <laughs> wow. Are we are we collectively this gullible? This, this is what I, I just can't get over. Is uh, the the adults are supposed to know the difference between fantasy and reality. But there's enough gimmickry in movies and uh, documentaries and proof and all this other shit to convince you of just about any damn thing. I mean, crying out loud. People look at how they cling to religion. And the sad part about it, to me, it seems, is the, uh, the over-educated... And the absolutely undereducated are the folks that grabs the hardest. And the middle people, some do and some don't. But the, it's like the totally rich, yep. And the totally poor, yep. And everybody else, maybe. Like that. <sighs> now, is it a good thing or a bad thing in life You know, to uh, judge other people by what your superior being is? <laughs> to me, I cannot understand what the point of religion is outside of, like Carlin said, my my God's got a bigger dick than your God. What the fuck are you going to do about that? Fight. What else is there? I and mean, that's what religions do: is they fight each other for dominance, and they all represent the same thing: love. <laughs> Not one of them does it. Well, unless you're like under fifteen. <laughs> But that's a whole nother story in itself. And I don't think any one religion is any worse than the other when it comes to uh, the horrid crap that people do within the protections of you know, the church. Where's a better place to hide than a church if you're a horrible piece of shit, right? You just say the right words in front of everybody and behind closed doors. You are what you truly are. But there you go. And it's been proven time after time. So I'm just not voicing, you know, my solo opinion here. On. I'm stating a, a fact for a change. And I'm not blaming any one particular, you know, the Catholics or any of that shit. It's probably all of them. I can't understand what what the draw to that dependency on, uh, on an invisible thing to, to guide you through life when you can look around and see all this physical stuff. What do you need an imaginary friend for? Can't you find a real friend? <laughs> Don't you trust other people, baby? What's wrong with you? So I was talking to my wife about that a couple of days ago. <coughs> and, uh, we were we were on a binge. 
Watch him. Hold on. <coughs> well, watching religious stuff. You know, God this and Jesus that. And after watching some of this stuff, I look over at Cirque and I blur it out. It come pretty much nowhere. It's, it's something like this. It's amazing how human beings ha had to make a man out of their God. Because that was the whole point of all that Jesus stuff. And, you know, the stuff we're watching is debating whether the guy even existed or not. All this deep-rooted, philosophical, religious crap that... You already got your opinion made up before you watch it any fucking way. <laughs> you might not know that, but hindsight will show you that. Even if you believe something, if there's a little bit of doubt in your head, and you back, you go back and forth with it in tiny little steps, someday you just give it up completely. But that's a lifelong indoctrination and some deep-rooted uh, messing around with you with your belief system from a very, very early age. So, now fortunately, I didn't have that. Uh, I got spared all that being pushed. They told me, you want to go to a church, you go to a church. But we're not going to go to the damn church. That's on you. And I had two choices because my father was uh, a born Catholic, you know, right into that shit. And my mother is Jewish. So I could go either to the church or the synagogue. It didn't bother either of them. They didn't want to go. So I never went. And because I didn't go, that uh, freed me personally of this Jewish crap. But not my grandma, not all the old Jews that know a Jew when they see a Jew. It's an old Jew thing. And probably I probably got it, but I never developed it. So I don't care enough to identify my fellows when I'm out in the world. I think my fellows are people that, you know, like music and smoke dope. And that's about, that's about all the requirements I got. <clears throat> if you don't do those two things, then we don't really have much of a foundation to have a, a personal interaction as far as friends go. <clears throat> because... That's the way I am. And I don't like to lie to people and pretend I'm not something around them so they'll, you know, be comfortable. Fuck all that. This is my castle, and I'm the king, and I'm going to do something. And uh, my wife said, that's okay. <laughs> so there you go, right? What's life without a little thrill? you got to live on the edge every once in a while. Oh, and then earlier today, when, when I was uh, coming up with this crazy idea about the potheads just going on a worldwide strike to smoke a fucking fat one and just tell everybody to fuck off. If there's as many of us as you know, people claim, in America, you outnumber the cops about 90 to 1. So, hmm, what a powerful, you know, powerful concept that is. But... Potheads are kind of complacent people, and they don't like to be told what to do in the first place. So organizing them is like herding cats, like Mary says. Ain't never going to happen in this lifetime. But it's a beautiful idea that you know you can stop chain and change the world by saying no in mass. But of course, there's no way to get a get a group together anymore. People are so split. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this, so on and so forth. I'm like that in certain areas. There's certain things I won't do, of course. And there's certain ideas that I never even bring up even on the dork table for a joke. But by not doing it for so long, it's kind of obvious which topics I won't touch. And there's not too many of them, but there they exist. And it's only because I, tr I try to... Limit myself to things to talk about that I've got experience with, or maybe I would call a deep hatred for something half an experience. But, you know, just because I don't like something, that doesn't really make it real in my world. It's just something I identify. Like uh, Creepy Joe Biden. Right? I use him as an example. 
And all these horror stories I've always heard about, you know, kids getting abused by grown-ups and whatnot, and this, that, and the other. Well, how can you not notice the difference between how a, a grown-up should behave and how a grown-up does behave, even when you're a kid? And when I was a kid, I just knew something. Something was strange about certain people, and I'd avoid them. I got teased about that till I was a teenager. My fussiness to uh, be around certain people. And here I am now. And I still, to this day, as old as I've gotten, I'm still fussy about who, who I physically associate with. And I really believe that most everybody, especially my, my friends on the real liberty media.com, uh, Grimms, a self professed hermit, you know, that. And all that indicates is that he's self-sufficient to me. I, other people can take it as far as they like, but yeah, it doesn't mean much. Now, I got a partner. I don't do well without one. So that's you know that's my crutch in life is uh, the ability to know that I'm not cut out to be alone. Because <laughs> some people can't, and I'm one of them, and other people can So, you know, my hat's off to you if you can. But if you can't, and you can handle admitting it, Good luck finding a partner that won't shoot you in the forehead. Because, man, do we, is it amazing how, uh, like me and Sark are day and night, opposite, complete opposite, in every freaking social respect there is to look at, right down to our gender. And we're the opposite. But yet, I can't do without her. <laughs> but we don't see the same world. You know, She's from one country and a little bit younger than me, and I'm from another country, and a little bit older than her, and and I came up through uh, passing notes, you know, and uh, walking places, riding bicycles, to driving cars, and uh, <laughs> now there's all this instant everything. You can get a cell phone that'll cook your freaking eggs for you if you got enough money. Anyway, the... Church gouge. Oh, Mr. Grimner's got a little bit to say tonight, too. To hey, Grim. I think this is a... Hmm. It's just a situation in life where uh, you make the best of uh, what is in front of you in the world. And I've had the good luck to go to the things that I was curious about to see if I wanted to be there or not. <laughs> so... Uh, so I did. And other things, uh, obligations to family and whatnot. But, you know, all that's all over and done with now. So I'm I'm actually, well, although married, I am a free man as far as obligation to uh, my elders and whatnot. That's all over. And I thought it would be kind of, uh, that'd be different. I never thought I would miss the uh, the, the parents. After, you know, they were gone. But I did. I still think of them. So, you know, that just goes to show, no matter how people treat you or how you think they try, they did or whatever the fuck the end result is, if you're still alive and healthy at the end of the game, you always feel bad for the people that, that didn't, you know, last as long as you are. Even if they are older than you. Because some people live to some freaking ripe old ages. My folks made it to their mid-70s. Both of them. So, if there's any uh, you know patterns to be set, maybe I'll pass that one. But <laughs> maybe maybe not. Maybe I'll get that Corona. <laughs> I'll get me a Corona and a big fatty. Walk over to the bridge of highs and sit down and cough to death or something. I don't. What the fuck happens? Uh, oh, I've seen so many links, but I'm not going to open every damn thing I see on the internet about this this new. Um, <laughs> Bill Gates party that they're having. And it started out in China, but made it all its way here. Hmm. So, is it real or is it not real? That is truly the question. Because I did read something I do remember about it, and that was uh, <coughs> the symptoms are very similar to a flu. Is a flu a virus, Grim, or do you know? We got a medical mind out there listening tonight that's in chat. If you know if the if uh, the flu is a virus or not, I think it is, right? 
a flu virus. I'm because I butcher, I butcher words all the time. I just didn't want to be saying it wrong this one, this once in particular. But there's a there's an old wives' tale: tale starve a cold, feed a fever. So I think with a virus, you don't get a fever, or you do. And if you do, you uh, you feed it. What do you feed it? So what I guess what I'm I'm reading and through all this shit is that there's a way to beat this freaking thing without them, if you're smart enough to read the instructions. You know, it's like a cryptic message. <laughs> they play games with us. You know, we're we're lab rats. They're experimenting on us to see what'll happen, and they've gone as far as AI. And this is cool with everybody. They're Ah, fuck yeah. And they've seen all the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. We all know Skynet takes us over in the end. Come on, guys. Hmm? And then it starts a nuclear war. (laughs) Right. Now, my question about nuclear war, because we got a a new program on Wednesdays, I think tomorrow, is uh, Lonnie Clark and... She's a. Uh, she has an opinion of her own about nuclear. I don't share that opinion. My wife shares her opinion. Most of everybody else I know shares her opinion. But I think that uh, for the most part, the nuclear thing is just one more scam, one more scare. But there were a few explosions and some videotape of explosions and. Some pictures of some this and that and threats in the press are all over the place, right? But when you, uh, when you listen to the people that, that physically handled it back in, in the 60s or before that, they paint a different story. Their story is painted that if nuclear is handled properly, there's no threat. If you mishandle it between these guidelines... There you go. You're fine. But what the government did was made the guidelines so ridiculous that the uh, <laughs> they don't fit. the the minimum The maximum should be a minimum instead of a maximum. But they get away with these paper games, these word games. So the guy's doing videos. His name is uh, Galen Windsor, and he does videos and he's showing you all these magic tricks with nuclear waste. But the part that really sold me on it was, it's not the the video I saw, it was the explanation of what nuclear waste is. (laughs) He claims they uh, rewrote the laws to make nuclear waste what is actually the, the wealth of nuclear. They just relabeled it waste. So instead of you thinking, oh, this is what they're trying to get, they're getting it, and then they're hiding it from the public, calling it waste, when it's really what will work. And after all these years of being disappointed by government after government, no matter what fucking country I go to, I believe in, I think that the people that are you know, in the press at the times of all these events, and the media, in the uh, government, sitting in religious seats, People that have influence in societies at every level were all told the same story. Well, when you tell 100,000 people the same fucking story, what happens if you pound it into them enough? Eventually, they're going to vote for that. Yeah, make cannabis illegal. It's devil's lettuce. Makes the Mexicans all supernatural, and they're going to rape the white girls. No, no, no. Let's not have that. Okay, now, to go back, because I'm on radio and I'm alone, so this show is just nah, just an hour of me being uh, philosophical and maybe try to throw a joke in here and there. But uh, Grimner says flu is a virus. So, starve a cold, feed a fever. So, the fever is a flu, then you feed it. But what do you feed it? Or the flu is a virus, what do you feed it is the, probably the answer to this whole, whole equation. But they've got the advantage of making some super strength max or fucking dose out of it in the laboratory. So they they apparently they took a virus and they made it more deadly. 
At least if that's that's what I'm reading out of this. If if that's not what they're claiming they've done, and somehow it magically escaped and got out into the population, maybe it's just more bullshit from the government. I I don't know what to believe. There's so many ways to you know to murder a human being and pay somebody to say it was the coronavirus. People can be threatened into doing things. People can be bought and paid for to do things. There's, it's not like it's not possible, is all I'm saying. I'm not accusing the government of this one. I'm just saying their history shows they're probably full of shit, and this is a big scam. <laughs> and if it's not, well, it's been nice knowing all you guys. You know, I had a lot of fun over the time I got to spend with you here on the radio and then on the RLM chat. <laughs> Hey, Rob Works showed up. Good. Okay, Rob Works says you feed it food. Okay, so that's the whole whole idea. But when you when you're suffering from a flu, the thing you don't want to do is eat. But when you're sick like that, what would grandma do? Shove some. I had a Jewish grandma. Shove shove that chicken soup bowl under that little boy's. Get him food. Let it chicken soup. And uh, but the recipes. You know, that when it all these things that we grew up on are all gone now. And if the recipes aren't gone, the ingredients have been tampered with that are, you know, uh, available to the public, so to speak, Rob. You know what I mean? Like you could, I guess, 40, 50 years ago, you can go to a grocery store in America and buy a, a untainted vegetable and not have to worry about being poisoned by the fucking thing you're eating because it got sprayed by some shitty fucking Monsanto goo. But here we are, <laughs> all these years later. <laughs> the game's changed. It's a different world. So what I'm thinking of, I believe you, it's food, but <clears throat> what in in the world is safe to combat, you know, naturally? against the shit that's being shoved down our fucking throats because we're in a collective. You know? uh, so complicated. It sounds so complicated to me and it may be a lot more complicated in my head than, than it should be. But, you know, I'd hate to think that they can, that we could be so controlled so easily over a threat. I don't like being threatened. Hmm. Yeah, I don't been threatened all my life. I mean, it's just, I don't like it. You know, do this or we'll put you in jail. Don't do this or we'll put you in jail. It's always something. You know, you can't. Okay, now Rob Works is saying starve bacteria, feed a virus. Now, I know this is kind of you know, this might be uh, old hat and stuff to you guys if you've heard it all your life and you're familiar with it. I haven't. I've not really paid a lot of attention to this, but it got my attention. When I read a link and I started to think about it today. So I wanted to bring it up on the show and see, you know, am I on the right track with this? And apparently, there's a natural remedy to just about everything that you can think of. If you know what you're looking for as far as, not product to look for, but uh, the symptoms that you have can be remedied by food. We've Found that to be true time and time and time and time again. I mean, what do you think hemp is? Hemp seeds are a food source. They grow a plant. <laughs> How hard is it to understand? You can eat it. You can smoke it. You can burn it. You can do anything you want. And there's just two plants. One does one thing and the other does another. It does everything. <laughs> Except get you high. So, you know, when they confuse the public with, uh, well, this is a, relative of the evil lettuce uh, blah, blah, blah. then it was all downhill from there hmm. so how are we going to ever get things back back on track you know to uh cuz these evil governments the, uh, evil i don't even know i don't even know if i believe in evil but it's such a great word to describe them with you know cuz we all know what evil represents uh let's see what grim's posting up here yeah, I'm just doing a, an hour of banter. I, I was hoping this mirror would show up. And Grimner writes up on here, he says, If you smoke weed, you get high. If you read books, you get educated. If you do both, you get highly educated. 
Very good. Oh, Mr. Grimm is a thinker man tonight. And these things are true. You can't tell me that before it was criminalized, the public didn't smoke it. Give me a break. Politicians, landowners, kings, all these hypocrites that are in control. Their families made fortunes off this shit. And still do on the black market. Just less money. Hmm. Hmm. Whoa, Chinese mail-order brides are now 75% off regular price. Uh, Goober and would be so happy to hear that, but he's not here. Because he had to be a bonehead. Oh, well. But, you know, the guy was around for a long time, so it's hard not to think of him when you see these goopy uh, memes. <laughs> I'll never forget his spaceships thing or <laughs> sex bots. <laughs> You know, the things in life to me that are just fantasy, even if they are real. Are you out of your fucking mind? Give me a break. You can't drill for water in Africa, but you got money to go fly to Mars. Leave me alone. I don't even like to talk to people that are like that. Whatever that is, that greedy, I need you know all the fucking money, that kind of bullshit. It, and <laughs> we're all chasing the golden ring. <laughs> I'm going to be on the right side of it. No, you're not. Hmm. Here's another goodie I read. People are just now making uh, making this information available to the public. And they're rumoring about how the super wealthy are hoarding gold. Well, why would why would they do a thing like that? <laughs> Remember in America they just made it illegal to own gold bullion <laughs> for years and years and years. I might still be against the law. I don't know. I've been away. The laws change every time you turn around. Somebody's amending something or hiding it in another bill. You know, you got to read 80 pages to find that that four lines and <laughs> that you need. <laughs> it's a paper chase. And they got you trapped. And they came up with 80,000 new regulations in, uh, I think, in 2018. I don't even know what they came up with in 2019. They're just trying to keep their bar brothers in a you know job so they don't go to work. And, hey, got no work. Go hungry. Oh no, I'm a lawyer. Anyway, space sex bot ships. Hmm. What could we do with? Them? It's just sad. Uh, what's changed between the two o o three SARS outbreak and the current Wuhan Corona virus? CNN. <laughs> I can't read. Nothing. There you go. Reruns. Reruns. New scare 20 years later. The people that are afraid today weren't even alive when they started it. They ain't got any idea. But there is. Yeah, I know that, Rob. I see that. But there's that slight possible chance that this time <laughs> these guys are so advanced that they could pull off their threat. I don't know. I'm not going to discount it, but I'm not going to sit in fear of it. Oh, I'm in terror. I'm going to get the corona thing and die. Eh. eh. Life goes on. Thousands of people get the flu every year. Yeah, and thousands of people are so fucking unhealthy, Rob, that once they get that fucking flu, it kills them. And half of that is because of the shit that they fucking eat in the first place. I can't remember the last time I got a flu. I've had a... The threat of a cold. I go into public all the time. I'm around kids. I'm around grown-ups, old people, young people, you name it. So, I'm always out there amongst the real world. And if you're out there and there's something you know going around, you're bound to get it or to get the, uh, the signs of it. Well, through the help of the Internet webs over the last few years, I discovered that vitamin C can be taken in large doses if you know if you need it if like you feel ugh, take a 10,000 milligrams down I think it's milligrams to well whatever it is the capsules that I use they come in 500s if I take 10 of those and wait eight hours and take 10 more 24 hours goes by and I'm feeling back to whatever normal is for me I don't feel sick anymore and the last time it happened it was about a year ago I had it tickle in my throat coming on 
and I'm old enough now. I know that's not a good sign. Uh oh, something's wrong. Uh, cooking uh, something in your throat. You might be getting sick, stupid. So I loaded up on the vitamin C. Next day I was all right. And I would say that's because I pay attention to the uh, the advice I'm offered, and I try things to see if they're true, depending on the person that's given me the information. And I've been very lucky, and I've been uh, helped by people that were actually telling the truth. Let's see what Rob Works says. Yeah, thou- uh, hundreds of thousands. He says, well, I don't think I've ever, I think pneumonia I've been that sick, but I got through that. But people have been dying from it every year. Yeah, five. I think 5,000 a year or something died from the flu. or the, I forget if it's a year or not. I might be wrong on the amount. But it was a four-digit number. I think it had a five. Anyway, yeah, most flu deaths are from complications due to other conditions. Right. We're poisoned. We're all taking all these freaking... Uh, I used to take high blood pressure medicine. So I'm a used to guy. I quit. But, man, I remember... Not being a hundred percent, whatever I feel that is. You know, I walk around now. I feel normal to me. My normal, a hundred percent, capable of starting out here and going there without falling on my face on the way because I, I didn't eat enough or uh, I'm ill. Whatever the hell it could possibly be, and I think I take good enough care of myself to not worry about these things. But. If I was on the um, the medicine after all these years, I'd probably be in a, a, a physical wreck by now, I think. Hey, Rob, have a good smoke. Hey, Beetle showed up. You got his Beetle and Rob works and Grimner. Uh, this isn't the most talkative time of the day in uh, America right now. So a lot of people are... They're doing other things that they're not online at this t- particular time. We've got a little handful of uh, layabats that ain't busy working to pay the bills. Hmm? 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 What gives with that? Hmm. But I gotta, <coughs> I gotta say, being sixty years old, uh, I don't think it made me lazy as far as uh, any different than I was lazy when I was twenty. <laughs> when things need to be done and there's nobody to do it, I do it. And if they don't need to be done, then I don't do it. And I think need is a personal kind of thing. You know, what? where I was saying the other day on the dark table, you know, when you start barking orders at other people to do things that don't bother them, they're not the ones that are upset about whatever you're yelling at them to, to do. Why don't you just get up off your dead ass and go do it instead of barking an order at somebody else? Because that's pretty much how I was raised. Some maniac telling me to, but you better get the fuck up and go do this, basically, is what it meant, no matter how he said it. And, nah, I, I, did, I just took a, a disliking to that approach. So, I go with the easier, softer way of do it yourself, you know, fuck. And besides, how much life could I possibly have left? I think I want to enjoy as much movement as I can out of it. <laughs> you know, because uh, you can lose your damn anything, anytime, day or night. Cirque was walking the dog and broke two fingers. And that was a freak, and I know that, but she was, you know, just the dog overpowered her with that leash, and she, she, would, she doesn't have real strong hands. Now, me, I would have just tightened up on the leash and pulled the dog back. But that's, see, some women are still women. and They're they're not out there fighting, you know, guys in dresses claiming to identify as girls, you know, to be in the sport. (laughs) I saw that on the Internet the other day. Oh, God. Some guy, well, I guess he's a boy, but he tells everybody he's a girl and he wears a dress, I suppose. And he got into women's sports, and he just beat the shit out of his opponent really bad. Fucked her up. She, well, see, he, I, I can't call it a, sh- a nah. So the boy beats up the girl and gets praised for being uh, brave, and courageous for beating up a girl. Because he was saying he wasn't a, a boy. Hmm. 
I don't know. I try as hard as I may to really filter that fucker through and come out with a, yeah, I get it. No fucking way, sport. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Men are men, women are women. And competition, wow, I don't know. I think they use the whole concept of it wrong. Instead of facing off with people that you're capable of dealing with, they seem to mismatch you, you know, by age or, <laughs> well, they used to be gender. You know, they could be five foot tall and have to go up against somebody five foot eight. Then it's really not fair, unless you're really fast and you can bite real hard. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, we're almost done. I got ten minutes left here. Uh, let me have the, let me have a giggle. Anyway. I tried to, to uh, be semi-serious tonight on In a Perfect World all solo by myself, but eh, it didn't come out so good, I don't think. I think I went a little ha-ha, because uh, I think the cure for politics is the truth. I think that everything that's gone wrong in life, from the beginning of life till right where we are now, is all based on somebody lied about something. And I know it's a crazy idea because it's crazy, but I think if people would just tell the fucking truth instead of what they say, that causes all these problems. Like, for example, the cannabis laws. (laughs) If that's not based on a crack of shit, I don't know what to tell you. And this started a long time ago, so you got to figure... What after that was possibly true? Anything. I. And you can even go back further than the canvas was. Just go to the Federal Reserve Bank. And you go further back than that. I guess you can go to the, uh, the crap about the Civil War. That was kind of fun, you know. Slaves. <laughs> We're going to free the slaves so they don't have to be slaves no more. Well, that didn't work out so good for the slaves, now did it? And a lot of people will argue about that because of race. You know, well, look at all the blacks on welfare and this, that, and the other. Well, that was a government plan. They planned it that way. You know, when uh, when the seventies were tough in the early seventies, if you were of white persuasion, you're you weren't getting any help from the United States government at any or the state at any level of no. They they were only uh, catering to the darker persuaded people, and then as time went on, it, it's written into the laws somehow that in a way that we look right at it, but we don't we don't read legalese, so we don't know what we're, we're reading, and we just see the results of sixty years of feeding people off to, uh, off the tax money, you know that fantasy. When, if the truth be told, there's no money at all. We're all equally living on promises, credit. And uh, 300 families, basically, give or take, control every fucking thing globally or however you look at it. Their territory is their territory. Like, Denmark has a queen. And <laughs> I, don't, I don't know all the history of this place, but it goes back a few years. And... I don't know the history of Portugal or the history of Spain, but all these countries, corporations, go back a long, 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 long way. So, what are you going to do? You either you play or you or you will resist or whatever you do, but there's no opt-out for nobody. And if anything, with the uh, future tightening on us with <laughs> Corona scare, this scare, this last, this is going to do it. If this don't do it, then there is a lot more rebels out there in the world than I can I ever gave anybody credit for being. Because I think that the public is going to suck this up like a biscuit in gravy. If all these wackadoodle links I've been reading about, you know, women and uh, feminisms and magtows, everybody's split into groups. So there's no unifying shit. There's just pick a side. <laughs> And it's either, like Bush said, you're, you're with us or you're against us. But what he didn't tell everybody is that the people that you're, again, the people that rule them aren't. <laughs> They're all sitting eating at the same table. 
off the same, you know, porcelain and with the same silverware and they're swapping stories about the, you know, their mutts back home. So, you know, we just either accept that we're mutts back home and some prick is freaking eating steak because of it and that's just the way it is or we get together and we stop it. <laughs> and I don't see that ever happening. But it's a wonderful dream and in a perfect world I think we would um, take our 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 responsibilities back from the government and tell them to fuck off. But it ain't gonna happen. It's but it's my dream. <laughs> so with that we're gonna close up the In a Perfect World show. And thanks everybody for that did play along with me tonight. Or my night, your afternoon. And uh, we got tomorrow. Let's see what night it is. This is a Tuesday. So tomorrow you got Lonnie Clark coming on in the afternoon. <laughs> she has a brand new show. There's a schedule on RLM. RealLibertyMedia.com. Just open up the link and you can get the proper time. But I just wanted to mention, uh, she just started airing here about a month ago. So she's brand new. It's only got a few shows behind her. And then we've got on uh, Thursday, I forget the time because of the time zones. I think it's 9 o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, I might I might be wrong on that. But you got the uh, Power Hour. And Prince is still the main character. And I believe he's got Z-Pix and uh, Rotten Sox playing with him. So then that's Thursday. And Friday, we've got Grimner and Moose Girl coming on uh, with a Freakers Ball. And then Saturday, I'll do the dork table. At, um, it's 8 o'clock, my time. That's 2 o'clock on the uh, East Coast in the United States of America. And uh, then Sunday, you got uh, Grimner comes on with the blues. I was telling my buddy Ash about your show because he's a bass player. so And he, he's also in the blues. And he likes the new stuff, but he like, he's got a, a musician father, so he grew up with a variety so he's not stuck in a rut and i think he'll get a giggle out of your show because you find some obscure stuff on on sundays and then that leads up to the trivia game we'll play trivia sometimes i I just can't do it i can't type my typing is so bad i barely win i get embarrassed and then we uh got hal anthony comes on at noon o'clock on the california coast on sunday and then Monday night, you got Grim Leftovers. Funny as shit. He's really... I, I, you've come a long way in that. Because since you, you've settled into it, you got like a character or something. It's just funny as fuck to listen to. Me and Cirque were giggling about your boo-boo this morning. So, <laughs> thanks everybody. And uh, I'm going to sign off with... Uh, well, no, let me think if I got anything clever to let you guys... Here before I say goodnight. Hmm. Well, now just the usual. Keep your pants up, your skirt down, and walk home in a group. Good night. <laughs>